Commissioner Tavon Hall? Here. Commissioner Mac Willis? Present. Mayor Patrick Wimberly? He is excused. Commissioner Tanya Williams? Present. Commissioner Daryl Davis? Here. Commissioner Cheryl Hayes Bradford? I heard from her, but I believe she'll be here. Okay, let's move on. Commissioner Rebecca Daniels, present. And for the record, Chairman Steve Chisholm. I am here. Yes, sir. Thank you. We are moving down to item number three, adoption of the minutes. We have item 3A and item 3B, adoption of March 13th, 2023 meeting minutes and adoption of March 27th, 2023 meeting minutes. Has everybody had an opportunity to review the minutes? Yes. All righty. The floor is open for a motion to adopt the minutes. Motion to adopt the minutes. Support. The motion is like A and B, right? A and B. I was going to actually ask, uh, should we do this separately or should we do this as a whole for clarity purposes? All right, let's do okay. them separately, uh, please. So, of course, open for adoption of the minutes for item 3A. Motion to adopt the minutes for item 3A. Support. It's been properly moved and supported. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? The floor is open for a motion to adopt the minutes for item 3B. Motion to adopt the minutes for item 3B. Accept. Support. Support. Accept. Support. Been properly proved and supported. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. We're down to item number four, the first hearing of the public. This is for items not scheduled for a public hearing, but on the agenda. So to the general public, if you have anything that you would wish to bring before the planning commission, which is not scheduled for a public hearing, please approach the podium at this time and state your first and last name for the record. And hearing none, we're moving down to item number five, public hearings. Item 5A, case number 23-03-SLU, special land use. Marijuana Recreational Retailer at 29865 Michigan Avenue. The floor is open for a motion to open the public hearing. Motion to open public hearing. Or can probably move as supported. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. The public hearing is now open. Ms. Dixon, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, so we have reviewed the application for a special land use consideration from Pure Cannabis, the applicant who is here tonight. Um, they propose to reuse the existing 37,000 square foot vacant building on the two acre site as a uh, adult use retailer for about 15,000 square feet in the front of the building, and then two future tenants in the back of the building, which is not subject to our discussion this evening. The uh, parcel is directly to the west of the flight club and directly to the east of the old Howard's car lot. We have recommended the approval for the marijuana adult use real retailer at 29865 uh, with minor conditions regarding just notes uh, on the site plan, no smoking signs that will be added to the site, uh, agreement to inspections upon request by the building official, fire department and law enforcement officials, uh, a note agreeing to quarterly inspections, a note indicating all marijuana related activity shall be done indoors, Note agreeing to maintain a log book and note agreeing indicating that all marijuana will be contained within an enclosed locked facility and a note indicating that sale, consumption, or use of alcohol or tobacco products on the premises is prohibited. We have no reason to believe that the applicant is uh, unwilling to accept these conditions. Um, I do want to note that as we have in the past, the uh, special land uses 
harmonious with the master plan, but as we all know that the master plan is currently a little bit outdated. It has not discussed uh, marijuana establishments or received public input on such establishments. So that's something for your consideration. And the other uh, component I do wanna raise your attention to is the separation requirements that are an additional use standard. If uh, this is approved, it will be part of the, um, there's you know the other addresses to the east and the west that are approved, but currently are not established uh, with their business licenses. So we've kind of been through this before and I'm happy to go more in depth if we wanna discuss it further, but uh, this location, like I said, is kind of right to the east, there's a proposed uh, adult use retailer and then right to the west, there's also an adult use retailer. So within a thousand feet on both sides. That's my summary for the special land use requirements, and then we can get into the site plan later in the agenda. Thank you, Ms. Dixon. Uh, commissioners, just want to remind you before we have the applicant come up and before we have anybody from the general public come up and speak at the podium, um, this is, you know, some matters we've taken in Portland, Michigan Avenue. Not necessarily this particular address, but when we talk about the green zone and the different establishments along the way. When we talk about buffers and other applicants get knocked out because they become active or activated, if you will, before other applicants do. Um, I just wanted to be mindful of that, not saying I'm trying to influence you to vote or sway you any other way, but just to give you an idea where Sadness sticks in that uh, actually already did that, <clears throat> excuse me, stating exactly where it was. I know at one point in time we had a difficult time with voting because of some zoning and different things we were talking about at that particular location. And that just kind of sort of fell by the wayside. Of course, we don't have legal representation here tonight. So I would advise that you govern yourselves accordingly with uh, what you say and things of that nature. Um, but of course, let's go ahead and move forward with the public hearing, because this is for the general public and the applicant to present themselves and speak on these matters. At the end of the day, our governance really stops with the site plan review. We only give a recommendation based off of the special land use to city council to deny or accept, but city council does have the final say so in this. So at this time, you all let me know if you would rather go first or would you wish for the applicant to approach or the general public to approach? General public, general public. General public. Let's go okay. general public. There we go. If there is anybody from the general public who wishes to speak at this time, based off of the address 29865 Michigan Avenue for the special land use, marijuana recreational retailer, please approach the podium at this time and state your first and last name for the record. Thank you and good evening. Good My name is Mike Bahura, 77 East Long Lake, Bloomfield Hills. Uh, I am the applicant uh, the of Pure Property Holdings. I guess I, I don't know... Uh, what what type of presentation you want? I could tell you a little bit about the company. Uh, we we this is not our first rodeo. We have, we have stores that are operating currently in Macomb County and uh, New Baltimore, Michigan, and also down um, in Monroe. Uh, previously had a store in Lapeer, also uh, which was open in 2019, and uh, we just recently changed ownership uh, on that one last year. So um, we have experience uh, in this industry. We, we've never had any incidents whatsoever as far as regulatory issues with the uh, CRA or the local municipalities. Um, matter of fact, uh, um, a lot of times the CRA calls us because we were one of the first licensees way back. Around. They'll call us and pick our brains on, th uh, on, on certain things. So uh, I kind of wear that as a badge of honor. We haven't had any violations or any any issues whatsoever. So I'm happy to to take any questions or answer anything about this particular uh, location on Michigan Avenue. Just a quick thing uh, before we go over to Commissioner Daniels, I see her hand up first. Can you, for the viewing audiences on Zoom and those in the public, explain us what CRA stands oh, for? I'm sorry. Yeah, that's the Cannabis Regulatory Agency. That's the uh, state of Michigan, the agency uh, at the state level that handles all uh, cannabis matters licensing and enforcement and all that kind of stuff so and for those who can't view the site plan reviews and things of that nature is there anything additional outside of the cannabis industry that you are offering at your location as a benefit to the city of Inkster? 
Um, we, we're that's why we left part of the back of it uh, as a future use. Um, we don't have anything planned, set in stone yet, but um, that was that was kind of one of the things we always do. We always allocate a, um, some extra square footage, and then we'll work with the city and members of the public to see what um, what if there's a big if there's a need for something. Um, I'm also a lawyer, kind of during the day, I've done some expungements in the past and some other municipalities. So uh, I'd be interested in doing something like that. But uh, as far as like a permanent fixture in that store, um, we don't have any uh, solid plans yet, but uh, we wanted to get a, see if we got our approval and then we would, you know, be happy to work with uh, planning commission, city council, the general public or wh whoever to see what needs there are and see if we can fill that space up uh, with, with something that would benefit the city. Gotcha. And just as far as because, as you probably already know, there's a multitude <clears throat> of uh, recreational provisionary centers coming online, right? Sure. And they are buffers that a lot of municipalities go based off of the guidelines from the state of Michigan. In the event that other uh, entities who are near yours come online first, which would, in actuality, uh, prevent one from opening, how do you foresee that going? Uh, we know the risks going in. It's kind of a race at this point, uh, so to speak, for whoever would get, would be able to get their business license or CFO first, whatever would qualify as as being um, officially, um, you know, licensed or, or or what have you. So uh, we're perfectly fine with that. If if we uh, are fortunate enough to get to the finish line before the applicants on the on both sides of us, um, obviously that's what our intent is. If it doesn't, um, you know. We chalk it up and um, hopefully find something else to put in there. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be candidly speaking, economically, um, it doesn't, I don't know if it would make much sense to put some other traditional business in there. Um, I'm sure you guys all know retail is not exactly uh, booming or brick and mortar retail these days. Um, so uh, we cross that bridge when we get to it. But uh, in the meantime, we, we certainly understand the risk that we might be buffered out. Thank you for saying that. And I'm, I'm glad that you brought up the fact that uh, brick and mortar isn't, you know, the most prevalent nowadays. Regard well, let me rewind. Brick and mortar and people coming in the establishment is the most prevalent. However, e-commerce is, you know, the thing. So, okay. I'm going to turn it over to my commissioners. Commissioners, if you have, I'm sorry, Commissioner Daniels is going to be first. And everybody else, if you have any questions, okay. Commissioner uh, Willis will be second. If you have any questions, issues, concerns, or comments, please with us let us know so we can address those commissioner Daniels. i just want to clarify for the record um that you're speaking on behalf of the as the applicant i am as the, the applicant, public yeah, for, yeah, because I'm... the call was for the public oh i apologize I so you're speaking so yeah. you just changed everything around it's all good oh, so I, I just wanted to make sure that that was good for the record because as he started to speak i realized he was speaking for as the applicant so with that being said could you repeat your name again mike it's I'll spell my last name for you. It's B as in boy, A-H-O-U-R-A. -A. Okay, you are pure cannabis. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you, Commissioner Davis. Uh, Commissioner Willis. Okay, uh, the question I have, um, I know that's been a furniture store for 20 years or so. Um, are, did you recently purchase that building or, or you are the original owner of the, uh, furniture business. No, I have nothing to do with the furniture business right now. We have it um, as a, a a purchase agreement. We have it under contract with a lease. Both we have a lease with an option of purchase. Um, it's contingent on us getting approval. Um, you know, city uh, city and state approvals for the marijuana business. So, um, if we are approved, then we would go ahead and and uh, close on the building, and essentially uh, the mattress or the furniture place would would be shut down, and we would occupy that space. But I have I have no affiliation with them or the property owner uh, currently. Hello. Yeah, I'm all ready, Commissioner Banks. So I'm just trying to understand. So, so you're making provisions for a space that you don't currently own. Well, I submitted uh, to the with the application uh, the the lease and the purchase agreement and a letter from the property owner acknowledging that we we have a legal interest in it. Should we get approved? That that lease would become essentially uh, binding.
Okay. Any further explanation done? You wish to elaborate on? Um, it's um baffling to me that you would go to such a length for something that you don't have a sign executed. Oh, we do. You just said it's you 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 submit it. I submit it to the with the packet, the executed uh, purchase agreement and lease. Been, so, okay, so maybe I misunderstood then. So you're saying you plan on, because he asked about, he asked if you were the owners, correct, of this um, furniture dwelling. Mm -hmm. And you said, no, you have a lease with the current owners. Correct. And, as well as a purchase agreement to purchase the property at our option. But yes. So right now you are leasing to purchase at this present moment? Uh, yeah. You have submitted a yeah, lease. I've, I've submitted the executed lease to with, with the packet. Yes. The answer to your question is yes. Not to us, to the owner of American oh, It's not the so the the property. I don't know if it's the same owner, but the person that owns the property. I think he owns the furniture store too. Yeah, he exec, he entered into a lease agreement with with my company, Beer Cannabis. And he's accepted your offer. Yes. Oh yeah. Okay, because you didn't say it like that. Oh, I'm sorry. That's why I thought it, it, it's baffling to me that you would go to such length. Oh no. To be doing such work on something you haven't been. No, no, we have. Know, yeah, we we have a fully executed agreement and. Yeah, I, I apologize. I said yeah, I apologize <laughs> if that came up. <laughs> okay. So, no, okay. but to answer your question, no, I couldn't. I couldn't follow through with any of this. Absolutely, legal, legal that's interest. why it was baffling to me. Like, why would you be? Yeah. I'm sorry, uh, Commissioner. I'll hold your thought for one second. Um, just piggybacking on what Commissioner Daniels just brought up, I was trying to pull it up, but I was going to ask if Ms. Dixon, if you knew exactly what page the lease agreement was located on at PDF. In our file. I didn't include the yeah, lease so agreement is, in okay. your packet. I but, you, but you do have a copy of it. I do have a copy. I typically leave out the, um, I guess the, the background information of the packet just for brevity's sake. It's already a 60 page packet. So, but, um, but, but that's available. Yes. And that's something that we go through as part of our process to make sure. And that's very typical with other businesses as well, non marijuana related businesses where. They present a lease agreement and uh, a letter from the property owner indicating their willingness to um, allow any sort of changes or with this a purchase agreement. So this is not out of the ordinary at all. Thank you, Commissioner Daniels. Did that satisfy your inquiry on the lease agreement? I think so, but she's not saying what I really want to hear. Because I heard, I heard her say that he brought forth a lease agreement. I want to hear the words from you because I heard him say it after I had to say it after we had a couple of conversations. It's an executed lease agreement stating that the buyer, I'm sorry, the seller of American Furniture has accepted his offer. Yes, the, the property is currently under lease with the option to purchase. Okay, and that's ex executed. Yes. Okay. I just, I, yeah, could you? That's satisfy? That's satisfied. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Daniels, let the record show that Commissioner Shirley, uh, I'm sorry, uh, hey, Bradford <laughs> is, pre is present with us as well. Uh, Commissioner Hall, the floor is yours. Yep. So, let me know if I can speak on this, but so it's two other businesses right next to you. Correct. That's almost, my eyes almost done, I guess, in a sense. In construction. In construction. Okay. And if this passes, you're able to, like, you taking a, a risk. Like, you, okay. Right. Yeah. It, it, you know, honestly, we were hoping that the amendment would, would have, they were going to change it to a green, green zone, but we knew that there was a chance it wouldn't and that we would be in this uh, situation. Okay. Um, and I've got my contractors on standby and everybody else ready to go. So, uh, like I said earlier, we we understand the risk. If we if we get it done in time, um, you know that would be great. But um, if we don't, we understand the ramifications. Oh, all right, all right. And just to piggyback on the question that Commissioner Hall had inquired about, um, reason being is my colleagues on the Extra City Council, uh, their voices voicing what the concerns are from the community, has been an overabundance voice or exertion however you want to call it, of a tiredness of the cannabis industry in Inkster, 
with us only being 6.2 square miles and the cannabis uh, provisionary centers, if you will, popping up like gas stations, right? Mm -hmm. And so that was even a hard vote for myself to take at the corner of Michigan and Middle Belt with that one being so close to the river and environmental issues and things of that nature. Um, but of course, nothing was going there. Some people at service level look at, hey, any development in Inkster is a great development. But when you are elected from your district as a voice for the people and you're saying enough is enough, that's why with Commissioner Hall and others, if you will, um, and on city council, and then just the voices from the community. Of course, the community isn't particular here because with the public hearing, it's not that many people who <laughs> live right there in the radius of it. But when they're driving past and they see these establishments going up, they're sending me messages. They're calling. They're inquiring. They're coming to council me, and they're saying enough is enough. But of course, sometimes they're too late because they weren't here on the front end to voice their concerns. So that's why these concerns are getting brought up. Like, hey, you do understand the risks, the ramifications, and things of that nature, because uh, it's a tough pill to swallow. It's an uphill battle to fight, and things of that nature. When we have you or whomever as a business applicant come before us saying, well, we were in our right when we applied, but you're saying your citizens aren't saying X, Y, and Z. So that's why that's coming up. Nothing against you, the industry, anything like that. But at a certain point, even with the dollar stores, and I'm just using this as an example, mm -hmm. Dollar General was trying to come to Inkster at Lehigh and Inkster Road. The residents over there did not want it at all. And they and, and one of our council people were very, very, very adamant in that. And people ask, well, we looked you up. You're the parent company of all these other ones. Why don't you bring this here? But of course, you know how corporations go. And they're like, we're, uh, that's just not what the market and the demographic of Inkster is going to sustain. Well, they moved into somewhere else under permitted use. And the citizens were happy. <laughs> but it wasn't an additional dollar store. It's just one moved out, one moved in. But at that location at Lehigh Nix Row, where they were proposing it was it was gonna go, people weren't happy. And it was just like enough is enough. We don't need any more dollar stores. Let's do something better to show people that we have more in Inkster and we're valuable, so on and so forth. So not to be labored at, I just want to use that as an example as to why those particular questions get posed um, from our general public. Do you have anything, Commissioner Hayes Bradford? No. Not this time. Okay. Commissioners, anybody else have anything for the applicant? Commissioner Davis. Yes. Okay. When she first started off, it said it's a vacant building. The building's not vacant. It's an operation. I I don't believe if I did, I said that in a mistake, but okay. uh what I think I was referring to with the vacant was the back portion of the building will be there's vacant uh suites. In the building. Okay. Then your your uh lease agreement and everything contingent on if you don't get your license enough then at least go away at least to buy go away yeah if we, if, it, if we don't get approved then i presume it would just the mattress or the I keep saying mattress the furniture store would, would just stay there it's just yeah. the mattress store. Mm -hmm. anything further commissioner uh commissioner davis no oh. not this time okay commissioners anything else so thanks oh okay and then we'll go back to Commissioner Davis. You can go ahead. All right, Commissioner Davis, she's you on the floor. Okay, and then you're coming up with the business. So that one bit, your business now is strictly that day. You don't have no nothing in plan to bring some type of eatery or something that uh, could be. Not, nothing go. definitive that I could offer you today, but like I said earlier, um, if we were if we were to to get approved, then we were to be the ones that kind of were the last man standing out of the three over there. Um, that's when I would probably look, my, my ideal uh, tenant to be situated next to us is always a restaurant type business. Um, I hate to feed the stereotypes, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> people do get the munchies sometimes, but they right, do get right, it. Right. <laughs> the restaurants next to dispensary seem to do quite well. So that would be my uh, ideal. Because right, they know the citizens think to like to have some establishment to, to go to outside just Everybody's not going to purchase and stuff. Sure. Yeah. And I'd be open to that, like I said, and, and discussing with the city council and, and the citizens to see what, what would be a good fit over there. Uh, the problem a lot of times is just um, trying to convince some of these non-cannabis businesses to kind of situate next to us. Sometimes they're a little uh, hesitant or skeptical. 
but in Lapeer, we were able to, you know, occupy just a portion of a shopping center and it was vacant. And after we were there a few months, it got filled up real quick because, uh, you know, we're almost like an anchor, you know, uh, where these other businesses kind of see that we're bringing in people coming through the door and they want to try to capture some of that business too. Commissioner Davis, anything further? That's it. Oh, when you talk about you're kind of an anchor, what were some of the steps that you took in that process to be an anchor um, as far as crime deterrent, um, promoting the business in a positive light? Because, you know, we have a lot of churches in the community of Easter, right? And a lot of them look down upon this industry. So what were some of the steps you took? So we did we did a lot of community outreach that we had, um, not just for customers. I actually... We had we had patient education seminars inside the facility for people that were interested in trying uh, medical marijuana for the first time. But then we used that we had a little classroom set up in that facility, um, and I'm going to have enough room to do that here too. But we also invited uh, people that, especially people that were uh, and opposed to us um, at city council meetings. I would I would introduce myself and ask them to come to these um, and let them ask us questions. Um, trying to, you know, make, we just want to get out there that we're not the boogeyman. Uh, I always tell people we're probably outside the police department, probably the the most, the safest place, facility in the, in the city because of all the cameras, security guards. Um, and if, and if you've ever been into um, a dispensary, there are probably some of the nicest retail places uh, in town, at least, um, you know, for the majority of the ones that I've been into, including ours. Um, so, you know, to me, the best way to go about it is is uh, I, we have to try that much harder to prove to the the residents that we're we're not drug dealers uh, that that we have this stigma. So I always invite, especially people that uh, are not fans of ours, to to come out, ask me any questions they want. I'm happy to answer them. Uh, we we did uh, we did we did. I mean, we still do uh, a lot of stuff with um, donations and giveaways backpacks for kids during you know for when it's going back to school time uh just uh in november i think we donated about 10 or twenty thousand dollars worth of turkeys throughout the uh, the new baltimore area um monroe we just opened a couple weeks ago so haven't had a chance to do any of this kind of stuff yet but in lapeer and new baltimore we were uh we were we we rarely said no when they came and asked when, when the city uh came and asked us to help out with certain things so and I, I, at the end of the day, I think the only way I can prove to, to the naysayers is just by, by, by doing good things. You know, I, I can speak about it till I'm blue in the face, but it's ultimately your acts that end up uh, uh, proving who you are and what kind of company you are. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Williams and then Davis. Thank you. And then Daniels. Okay. Um, I just have a question regarding um, for the... In the cannabis industry, um, if you could refresh my memory, what is the um, percentage of um, Inkster residency being either employed or active in that? Can you give me that scenario again, please? I believe it is 15%. Uh, the, I was sifting through the business licensing chapter over the weekend and the latest version I have access to is says 15%. So I guess that's my caveat is that I hope I believe that's the most up-to-date version, but that's what I've understood to see. Now that gets checked at the business licensing portion. So that's just checked with the clerk's office when the applicant comes to apply there and then they move to planning. Okay, so is it 15% ownership or is it 15% uh, um, Employment, what 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 specifically? 15% equity. Okay, 50% only. Okay. All right. So then I do have a question to that. Do you have already in mind your your uh local contingency for that if you were approved? Uh we've we've talked to a few people. We haven't narrowed it down to one person yet, but we we certainly will meet that criteria. Okay. Anything else, uh Commissioner Williams? Um, I just want that to be, you know, because that that's something that's a, an important aspect of any of the end of this part of the industry coming in that there is a local um, component to it. So that's the reason why I just wanted that on the record that there has to be at least a fifteen percent equity 
in the business of whoever gets to the finish line to make it. And that is all, that state. That is not a state requirement to my understanding. That's something that's in the local ordinance. Okay, that's local, okay. So that's our Inkster ordinance, correct? Yes. I just, need, I just needed that to be stated publicly for the record again, because I wasn't sure where, what the uh, split was. Gotcha. Thank you, Chair. You're all set? Yes. All right, thank you, Commissioner Davis and then Commissioner Daniels. So if all said be done, you can front of your building, the middle portion of the building, you're going half, and then half if you ever come down to it retail, or the half would be for the man for my water business, and you setting something aside for future usage, yeah. if that come across. So yeah. your future usage would there be back of the building, the side of the building, you know, you're splitting the building in half. That's a big building there. It is a big building. Right. Yep. And you got parking in front, and you also be able to make some parking and stuff in the back, too. Yep. All right. Anything further? No. Oh, hearing none, Commissioner Dance. Okay. I got several things because I'm, I'm just feeling really um, not settled with this lease with option because you stated that you have an executed lease agreement, yep. meaning that you actually are leasing this property right now. Yes. But then you also stated somewhere that if you are not approved, that it will go back to, an, um, a, to a furniture store. Well, I think that I don't know the exact language off the top of my head, but I if if we're not ultimately approved for um, to to get a business license here, then we have the right to back out of it and terminate the lease. Oh, so you okay? So you do have a contingency there. If if it's not approved, you do have that. Absolutely. Okay, that makes me feel better. Yes. And then secondly, um, I think um, Commissioner uh, Hall brought this up with the the thousand dollar. Thousand dollars. I keep saying that thousand dollars every time I say this. Thousand foot buffer on each side of this prop of this property. We, we already have two marijuana facilities coming, or just wanting to come, or are they actually in the work? And have we discussed that, or that's just something you have? Uh, so they're both approved with City Council special land uses neither of which have received their business license. So the way the code is written, they're not considered established facilities. Okay. The one is uh, the old Howard's car lot, 29899 Michigan Avenue. And then the other to the east is what we've, you know, called the flight club property, uh, 29709. Okay. Yes. Michigan. Uh, so they're both underway, but they have not received their final business licensing approvals. And, and if he were to finish his before then, one of the one of these or both of these will be knocked out because both of them are a thousand feet on each side. That's correct. Okay. Okay. Secondly, going back to what you said, um, uh, Commissioner um, Davis talked about how you're going to um, uh, uh, the building. Yeah, you got because I, I, I got some pictures here. Yep. Okay, so the whole front. When I'm looking at this right here, is this the whole front, or is this like this? That, that's the proposed sales floor. Those are those are conceptual renderings, so it might not be exactly. It's not to scale, but just. To I just want to know: are they side to side or front well, and back? That, that the one on that one is is. Uh, let me make sure. Yeah, this is the lobby, like reception area when you walk in. Uh, okay. And then that would okay, be so. Set. So this is really not nearly hardly any part of the building at all. It's when you walk in, yep. you're getting greeted in, and yep. then this is kind of like what it's going to look like when you're inside of the building. Yeah, correct. And like I said, it might be obviously it's going to be wider, much wider. So, yeah. but I wanted to give you guys some idea of what our existing stores look like. So we had some running done on what our stores have looked like. In this and the two tenants. We don't know the vacant it, suites. Where are they? They behind. They're gonna. Be, they're gonna be in the back. Yeah. So that will be behind yeah. all of this. And if I get a if I get a tenant that is uh, willing to occupy all of the space, uh, all of the vacant part of it, um, then I would come back in front of uh, you know planning if I needed to to reconfigure the setup. 
But right now, I don't. It, it's hard to find a tenant to take up that much space. Right, and so this, so this, this has nothing to do with restaurant. This is no, no. It's good. Like I this said, this is just for like if somebody wanted to rent a space for maybe an office or a, nothing to do with the restaurant part. No. So the restaurant part that you're proposing again, where would that go again? I'm not proposing a restaurant per se. I'm saying if if I'm able to get somebody that wants to rent a space and right. occupy it and they need all the space, then I would I would probably have to come back and and do the you know change the change the layout so that they could have some frontage. Um, but for the time being, there there isn't anybody that you know that uh, is knocking down the door to to come there. But like I said earlier, once we get open, and we clean up that building and that property and make it look nice. And we're hoping we to attract some tenants. I don't like it once we get open stuff. And I don't, you know, I, I'm just, it's, uh, just once we get open, we're going to do this. Um, this, um, go ahead. I see you got your hand. I made you want to clarify something for me. Yeah, I just wanted to point you to sheet A 2.0. It's about halfway through your packet. Okay. Uh, look at the PDF or the paper. Uh, the PDF, it's page 34. Oh, that's right. That's if you're a, looking at the paper that's version, that's it's about halfway through, through, and it's sheet A2.0. It's uh, the floor plan. So just for your reference, I wanted Is to- Is it the A030? A2.0? Oh, I see. That, that's the- uh, So now the A.20 is just showing the- um, doorways and stuff. So I think what you're referring to that shows the two vacant vacant uh, space behind is a three zero. That's the page you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's the page. It's a three. Oh, okay. So when we're looking at this. Commissioner Dick, oh, I'm sorry, uh, city planner Dixon, would you approach please? Yeah, please. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, that's the one. So that's the one that's the one. Are we on page 34 of the PDF? One of the renderings. So this is the Michigan Avenue portion of the what a, what a clean, clean space is that? Yes. Okay. So then they're gonna have storage and office associated with the retailer. And then this is future tenant and future tenant. But I so they back to back. Okay. On top of and then, so, when he, so I know he's saying that he cannot say what restaurant or whatever it would be. So when I'm looking at that, what is he, where is he saying it would be? Do you mind if I? No. So this is, this is all re, the marijuana retailer. Okay. This would be a potential future tenant and this would be a potential future tenant. Okay. So a restaurant could go here potentially. That's what I was or, asking. Or, you know, here. That's what I was asking. So I'm trying to figure out where is he going to put this at if that was to happen. So it would kind of be like on the inside. Once you're inside, you can go to. You would have to enter from the outside because the way the law is, you can't have dual access to right. a marijuana retailer. That's the other question I was going to so ask. It will need to be on the, the outside from that parking lot on the west. That was exactly why I wanted to know. If this was to happen, how was he going to make it happen? And where was he proposing this be at? That's why I wanted to pull that. Pull Got it. Are you, are, you, are you able to put this on the projector at all? Or Mr. Seaton, are you able to put this on the projector? While he's doing that, I can, I can move on. I think this is pretty simple, what I'm about to say. With the recommendations from you, She's moving it over now. I know you have in here, you know, to add these recommendations, right? How is there any way that we're going to know that he's going to be done or he doesn't really have to do them or they're just being recommended? Okay, they, they are uh, conditions, requirements of the, the recommended approval. So I'm trying to do too many things here. That's okay. Take your time. Take it, exactly. Conditions, those are all coming out of the zoning code directly. Those are provisions that are required based off of this being a marijuana retailer. 
they're all things that during the final site plan approval process, there'll be a note. And then we go out and do a final site inspection before they receive their certificate of occupancy. At that point, you know, the things like the no smoking signage, the, you know, there's some of the things that we can physically check for. Mm -hmm. Some of the things we just have to have a noted agreement in the file for the quarterly inspections, you know, the willingness to, uh, have the property inspected by the fire department or law enforcement. Maintain a logbook. Yeah, the in the logbook, I believe, is also part of the state uh, licensing requirements. So these are all things that I'm sure that they're, you know, seasoned professionals, they won't have a problem with it, but it's things I list out just because it wasn't noted on their initial site plan. Okay, so it's really more than a recommendation. It's, it's, it's really a requirement. So the recommendation portion speaking... Um, Go ahead. I'm the, re- the recommendation portion is speaking to the planning department's recommendation to this body, and we're listing these conditions okay. for the approval. Okay. Like you said, like many of those recommendations are state requirements, anyways. So it's something we we have to do, even if you didn't ask us to do, or make it a condition, we would still have to do all that. Stuff. Okay. Okay. Commissioner Daniels, you all set? Or you still on? Um, I do have um. Uh, one second, Commissioner Wins. One more. Um, I forgot it. Never mind. Go ahead. Come to you. Thank you. Commissioner Wins, and then we'll go back to Commissioner Dance. Okay, so this is for the applicant. Looking at this layout here, and I, I understood what you were saying, so I'll kind of clarify for the public and for the, my, my, my fellow commissioners. In the event that you did make it to the finish line first, uh, I just heard you say something that I, I want, I think I want to reemphasize. If you make it to the finish line and this becomes uh, the recreational user, you were saying that if you were able to uh, secure a restaurant to, to uh, go into the facility with you, that you may have, uh, you may have the ability to adjust your plans to give frontage. Based on that diagram, and, and I'm, we of course can't hold you to it, but can you give me an idea of where you might give that footage to the front of Michigan Avenue for a, a restaurant? I get my bearings uh, straight, but it would be, it would be on the. What is if you can walk up there, yeah, feel free to walk up there. Yes. The West, so the West parking lot is going to be at, at the top. Please, please, thank you. Azar Maddie, JNA Architectural Engineering. Thank you. Uh, if we were to do this, this is uh, Michigan Avenue, as James pointed out. Um, this space right here, which is considered storage and office space, we can easily remove this and move it towards the back if we needed to. And this could become a uh, store frontage. Right on the okay. Beautiful. I like that. Yeah, and can you talk to this? This little square down here, and then all the way from the back would be available for us to kind of just Please. imagine peeking around and whatever. And that frontage that uh, the, for, to the engineer. So for the frontage that the engineer is referring to, what what's that square footage right now that's currently being used for storage? Uh, and roughly what the uh, the chronic uh, uh, chronic length. Okay. No problem. Just an estimate would be great. Six thousand three hundred seventy-five square feet. Hey, gentlemen, can you do me a favor? I believe uh, our media director had you a uh, laser pointer. If you could go back to the podium for me, because the viewing audience can't hear or see you, and then just use the laser pointer for reference. I appreciate it. All right, so can the engineer go kind of go back over? So again, our public is here. Yep, yeah, you've got to have to say the microphone, unfortunately. Thank you. And you do. I don't know if I'm pressing the wrong button. Mm-hmm. No. That's enough. <laughs> 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 All right, Commissioner Davis. <laughs> there you go, bro. The middle button? I think I broke it. It's all good. You can put as a condition of approval, I'll replace that. <laughs> <laughs> Motion is on the floor. <laughs> yes. 
So this is the space right. we're talking about where you got storage and office space yes. here. Yes. Uh, this is Michigan Avenue, and this would give you that street frontage if a uh, restaurant was interested in renting out the space. These could be easily moved to the back of the building or wherever in this case. I mean, this building is huge. Yeah, it's very huge. Uh, another thing that's going to be cool about this, this will be, I think at this point, uh, they originally Monroe, uh, their dispensary is going to be in a few magazines for uh, the largest cannabis um, provisioning center. And this would top that. So mm. it would definitely get some media attention. No, we don't want no media attention. Right. <laughs> Positive media attention. Keep it down. Keep it down. <laughs> I would like to bring up the rest of my part because this is like so sincere for, for the uh, citizens of Inkster, for us, this body, and for the city council. This is like so huge. And when I, you know, and I hear all of the applicants say, you know, we, you know, we could do this and we'll probably bring this in and this and that. But when you say probably, it's like, in my mind, I'm thinking like, you got to have kind of like some kind of ideal. What would you, what could you see there? What would, do you envision there? You know, I know you can't make any promises to us, but it's like, we need to know that you're kind of genuine and at least the effort and trying to make sure that you bring some type of other retail other than marijuana to our um, community. So, so here's what I'll tell you. I, I, I don't, I will never tell you what you want to hear. I, I'm, I tell you what I have in front of me at the moment. Uh, I, I can tell you that I'm sincere when I say I really do want to bring uh, some other retail business. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it would, it would have been easy for us to, which point am I? Uh, it would it would have been real easy for me to just occupy this whole space and take up all the frontage and say it's a dispensary and nothing else. We we, we did this on purpose. We left this open because we we have uh, that that's the end goal is to bring some other business with a low you know. Uh, I I want it to be preferably somebody from Inkster that I partner up with, somebody from the local community. Okay. And in fact, at my other stores, my managers, my managing partners are. Um, like they're, they're local residents. They're usually from the first, you know, from the people that we've hired on initially. And then we kind of identify who, who's somebody that uh, we want to move up in the ranks and we make them a managing partner because uh, nobody's going to know the citizens of Inkster better than somebody that lives here. Nobody's going to know the citizen, uh, what, what the citizens of Monroe want than better than someone that lives there. And so that, that's the ideal. And that's the hope. Um, do I have a, a signed agreement from a restaurant today no, in my I'm hand? I wish I did. Um, but I think once we start renovations and we start really cleaning up that building and, and making it look pretty, um, then it's going to be much easier for me to, to try to go get one of those deals and, and bring it here. It, it's hard to um, try to sell this idea or, or you know impress upon people that we can actually be successful until they start seeing some money being pumped into that project and, and clean up the building and the facade and all that stuff. Okay. Yo, is that Commissioner Daniels? Yes, sir. Thank you. All righty. Commissioner Williams or Davis? Oh, all right. Uh, my question got asked. Okay. The thing I see what she's thinking of is that other bills, the other plans, they came up with who coming to the place. He didn't come up with that. So his thing started, I'm not sure what he wanted to do. Any further questions, commissioners? Being here enough from the commission, is there anyone from the general public at this time? We've had the applicant before us, but is there anyone from the general public who is before us in the physical form at this time who wishes to speak? to these matters at the address 29865 Michigan Avenue, special land use, marijuana recreational retailer. Ready, hearing none, thank you very much. Thank you. Anything further um, from the planning department? Not at this time. Not this time. And one last time, anything further from this body? 
All right, we did go over uh, about the, if you will, for lack of better terms, the race to the finish mm -hmm. and things of that nature. Um, Cause we know we've went through this whole thing with the green zone and stuff like that. And we do know that the special land use, regardless of the vote, whether it's a recommendation of denial or approval, the final say so is with the city council. Ready. Since there's no further discussion, the floor is open for a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. It's been properly moved. Who seconded? Uh, sound like Commissioner <laughs> uh, Willis. <laughs> w you put there. Okay, we, 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 we good, whichever W. Hey, race to the Come finish. Come on now. Which one, one is it? Come on now. Put B on this one. I'll get yeah, Commission uh, Willis. Second. <laughs> Commission Willis. Second. All in favor? Aye. Again, ladies and gentlemen, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. The public hearing is now closed. We're down to unfinished business. Item number six. And we have, we're down to item number seven, new business. Case number 23-02, site plan review, and 23-03, special land use, marijuana recreational retailer at 29865 Michigan Avenue. Review and consideration of recommendation of approval of a special land use request and approval of site plan for an adult use marijuana retailer and general retail in the B3 general business district at 29865 Michigan Avenue. Here, cannabis is the applicant. I believe we've had a lengthy discussion on this. I don't think we need to really open this back up for any type of discussion. <laughs> However, we will need two separate votes, one for the site plan review and one for the special land use. However, before we open the floor for a motion, Ms. Dixon, I yield the floor to you. Thank you. I just want to raise this body's attention to one uh, of the contingencies on the site plan consideration. It is a waiver for um, allowing 40 parking spaces. So that would be a reduction of, which is gonna be a staggering number of 52 parking spaces. So by the general retail uh, percentage, which is what you know, a marijuana retailer falls into, into, this site would require 92 parking spaces. In the planning department's opinion, that's excessive. You would be creating a lot of impervious surface. If there is some need in the future, we could require them with their future tenants to pave some of their back lot. But right now, given their floor plan too, as we have it pulled up on this uh, screen, you can kind of see, I don't think we're gonna have 92 cars worth of people in this area of for shopping. So I feel confident saying that this waiver is reasonable. I just wanted to raise that to your attention because that was one of the only uh, kind of, I guess, subjects we haven't covered thus far in the discussion. Thank and that's you. not in that packet either, the waiver. It, it is, it's listed as one of the contingency items okay. for site plan approval. What I would say uh, on that, oh, because I normally it. we would have waivers. It's been a while since we granted some waivers, ladies and gentlemen, our commissioners. So what I would say to be safe and for clarity purposes is that we have a third motion for that waiver. Okay. All right, so the first one would be, of course, the site plan review. The second one would be the special land use. Well, actually, let's, let's do it like this because those two go hand in hand. Let's do the first one as the site plan review, approval or denial. The second one would be the waiver for parking. And then the third one would be the special land use recommendation to city council. Is everybody on the same page? Mm -hmm. No? Care to elaborate? I I well, I moved it. I moved it because parking goes hand in hand with site plan. Okay, all right. okay, so I moved that up to the second. All right, all right everybody on the same page? Okay. All right. Is there any further discussion? Well, I'm sorry, we go into discussion after we open the floor for a motion. The floor is open for a motion for approval or denial of the site plan review for case number 23 202. We move to approve the uh, move to approve the old site plan. Uh, 
pipe land for the medical marijuana. We need retail land. Can I say that right? Uh, no, we can't approve. Yeah, you said medical marijuana. <laughs> this is a medical. Take a moment to accept the site. Okay. Is there support or a second? Support. It's been properly moved and supported. Is there discussion? Hearing none. All in favor. I'm sorry. Contingent, contingent of the following site plan. Considered upon the recommendations from the planning department. Yes. All right. Twelve of them. So we need to. Because we took out the motion for them. So it's contingent upon the recommendations from the planning department. The parking is going to be a third motion or sec the second motion. And Commissioner Williams, what were you asking? I'm sorry. Do we have to amend the initial or? Are we adding it now? Mm -mm, he's stating it now. Yeah, stating it now. <laughs> it's a site plan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking before I speak, so yeah, forgive me for taking my time. <laughs> <laughs> what did you want to say? Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? All opposed? Motion passes. We're down to the second motion which is the parking waiver, reducing it from the recommendation, reducing it from what is uh, in our ordinance to the recommendation of plan. Is it the floor is open for a motion for the parking waiver? I move to uh, receive a waiver to allow 40 parking spaces from planning commission that was originally set for 92 parking spaces. Is there a second? It's been properly moved by Commissioner Daniels and supported by Commissioner Williams. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. We're down to our third motion that we need to bring up. This is a special land use for the Marijuana Recreational Retailer at 29865 Michigan Avenue. The floor is open for a recommendation to approve or deny to City Council. Yeah, I move to recommend approval to City Council for the proposed special land use. Second. It's been properly moved by. 50. Okay, with the conditions listed below by the planning commission. Is there continued support? Second. It's been properly moved and supported by Commissioner Davis and supported by Commissioner Willis. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. We're down to miscellaneous. Um, just to bring you guys up to speed on the conversation I was talking to. I know we have a thing where we bring commissioner, new commissioners on board, and sometimes we need refreshers too, right? When it comes to parliamentary procedure and things of that nature. So I had asked uh, Commissioner Hall about... Uh, take some type of training, but I think we could probably have like a study session or something where we all come together in person on one of the particular Mondays that we don't have enough, uh, we don't have official business to handle and maybe just go over some digital uh, parliamentary procedure videos or things of that nature and discussion and just reviewing Robert's rules of order. So if you all are in favor with that, Maybe that's something we'll put on the agenda <clears throat> for in the future so we can all be on one accord. That was good. All right. All right, great. Does anybody else have anything else for miscellaneous at this time? I have miscellaneous. I go have right ahead, Commissioner. And I don't know if this is a place to deal with it or not, but we were uh, at the last council meeting, there was some concern about limiting, placing some caps on the amount of these different facilities, marijuana facilities that are able to come. And there was some scuttle bucket about saying they could possibly transfer for ownership. Is that a way that they could get under the radar and allow, because what I understood is if they may have lost their license for whatever the reasons were that we were not going to renew those licenses, right? Now, yes. 
it what happens if they were losing it and they did they found some that was somebody that was willing to buy that would that be a way that they could continue i don't think uh if they're in the process of losing it it's in the process of revocation there is no just oh we we're losing this so we're going to transfer i mean that's that's obvious um however that's my input on it just because of being if you will at that particular standpoint and in the know because immediately when they go to renew if they're in the process of losing it they're in the process of losing it or it being revoked right there is no gray area it's just is there an area where they could just say i don't want to do it anymore and they just want to give it to somebody else now that that's happened that's happened yeah so even the same thing with the liquor stores and things like that to transfer the licenses with liquor uh, establishments, if you will, though, it's on the local municipality to approve that transfer per the state of Michigan. So is there something that we could put into our language that would prevent that? That part is something we might need to investigate more. However, I will inquire with Ms. Dixon to either speak on that or maybe we can look at that together. So the way that the city council decided to place the caps, it was based off of location and not based off of license. So there... The way the, the language ended up working out is there's a cap of so many locations within the city. As long as that location continues lawfully existing, it can be sold, you know, the business can be sold and things of that nature, as long as it continues to lawfully exist. If at any point it ceases to lawfully exist, at, that's when they would no longer be able to reapply or locate at that original location or anywhere else in the city. So I don't know if it's a satisfactory answer, but that's oh because the way the licensing process works, people can hold multiple licenses. This was more in relation to the location. And as long as the business is operating at that location, once it ceases to exist, that's that's when that rule comes into effect. Well, I my understanding was a little bit different. I understand what you just said, and I'm not arguing with that because I could have gotten it wrong. But um, my understanding was they were trying, they wished that they had been able to get ahead of the curve so that they had a, would have limited more. Oh, yeah. But hindsight is, you know, 2020. Uh, but right now, if for any reason that um, the particular applicant was what I was understanding, if they were not going to be in the business anymore, then that license would also, and that establishment would, would cease to be. That's what my understanding was. And I, I guess for clarity's sake, if, that, if what we're trying to achieve is diminishing the presence of these entities in our city, I would like to close every loophole possible, you know, so that they won't be able to come in back door, side door, and all that kind of stuff. I, you know? I, I was going to say, uh, Commissioner, just being proactive with that, one, thank you for the input at the, at the planning commission level, because council is always challenging the authority and the direction of planning commission, right? Two, I would say, draft everything that you're thinking about mm -hmm. and forward it over to the city council members and ask that they consider those different things. Because I just received an anonymous letter in my mailbox the other day about bringing some matters up before city council, not related to this industry or anything like that, but just something else totally different. Um, and that is a step in the right direction, mm -hmm. of course, with amendments as such, the uh, applicants, Planning Commission or City Council Council could all petition the Planning Department or the petition, you know, tax amendments, whatever you want to say, to start these processes to put all of those in there. Mm -hmm. But because this is just a fluid system, mm -hmm. your input is just as valuable as anybody's. And sometimes we don't always see everything. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, draft those up and get them over as soon as possible. That way it can start being taken into consideration. Um, and just close all those loopholes, those gaps and things of that nature. And quite honestly, when we enter those particular environments, let's put it that way, 
that should be something that legal should be closing the gap on as well. So, <laughs> <Thank you however, for that. laughs> as an appointed and elected body, we have that obligated duty as well. So that's why I welcome it fully. Whether you bring it before us as commissioners for our next our next meeting to move forward on, or do you bring it to the city council? But at the end of the day, you already know it's going to come before us first before it goes to city council. And we and we can always chat, you know, offline over coffee, tea, you know, so. <laughs> yes, <laughs> something in those years. But no, I do, I do. Thank you for bringing it up. Yeah, was there anything else further? Okay. Anything else, commissioners for miscellaneous? I do. Go right ahead, commissioner. I was um, driving down Easter and the um, church, oh, the the barber shop that we ourselves that used to be a church has an orange sticker on it. Wait. What's up with that? Wait, where? You say you drive down Inks Road, Inks Road or Michigan Avenue? I'm sorry. Inks Road. Inks Road. Road. The barbershop mm -hmm. barber that we just church. approved to become. The hair salon. The hair yeah. salon. I'm sorry. Oh. The hair salon. It, a, it has an orange sticker on it. What's so, up with that? Orange sticker. Stop work. For the yeah. So what's, well, well, usually that's that's because, I mean, obviously they, they must be doing something. They might didn't pull their permit to, to or do something it. like that. And okay. So that's why they um, the building department stopped the work on it. I didn't see that's it. What I'm that's why. That's why. And I saw it twice because I, I specifically made sure I slowed down today to make sure they, they didn't put it. Mm -hmm. I passed spider, but I didn't see the stop work. But I, I just I saw the old sticker. I didn't see what was on. I just saw yeah. the Um Ms. Dixon, do you have any in, uh, input on that? Uh, the well, most recent knowledge that I have that on that <laughs> was the, they had some requirements they needed to meet for the building department to give them their certificate of occupancy. Um, the load bearing on the the floors, things of that nature. The uh, I believe the fire extinguisher system as well. And I think there was a little bit of difficulty, maybe. And I I don't know. I'm now I'm speaking a little bit more subjectively. Is the applicant was having a hard time securing proper contractors to pull mm. permit because their funds are limited uh, being a nonprofit and being a church. So I I think that might be what caused that work order to stop is they might've been trying to do the work themselves. And in the city of Inkster, you have to be a licensed contractor to pull those permits. Absolutely. So the city was on a job, yeah. ordinance was on a job. Yeah. I Our, love it. Yes. Oh, building. building. Just out of, um, I'm not trying to heavy your, heavy your <laughs> workload. But could you do us a favor, since Commissioner Daniels asked that question, could you just inquire with the building department and send it off to this commission, Absolutely. just so everybody's in and know? Yes. All right, thank you. Anything further, commissioners? Uh, I do have. Go right here, Commissioner Williams. Um, and I don't remember the name, but there is a um, carryout restaurant that operated for many years as a barbecue uh, restaurant. On Perks. Um, yes. Okay. Um, I see activity going on there. Is what, what I seen activity too, and the windows changing out and everything. Well, what what and good are we talking about? Pine and oh, yeah, Kurt's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Used to be Kurt's Barbecue. I don't know the formal address, but we can look it up. Can, uh, can we get some information about that as well. So that they have a trailer in the parking lot where they've been looked like they operate out of, and then of course the windows that have been replaced in the establishment. Mm -hmm. Pine and Extra Road. Pine and Inks Road. I am going, I'm on my map right now. Because I've had several residents ask me what's going on there. I'm personally, I'm curious as well. Absolutely. We have that. Like we have that. 4156 Look at that. Look at that. What's this, high noon? He was quick drawing. <laughs> the um, ordinance of building has been getting on for people. So any any input on that, uh, Ms. Dixon, 4156 Inks right now? The planning department has received no inquiries or applications regarding uh, 4156 Inks to Road. All righty. All right. Well, if we have none, let's add that to the list as well, <laughs> just as an inquiry. All right. Anything further, uh, commissioners? Hearing none, we're moving down to second hearing of the public. This is for items not scheduled for a public hearing or on the agenda. If there is anybody from the general public who wishes to address this body at this time, please. Um, 
please feel free to approach the podium and state your first and last name for the record. And we seeing no movement and hearing no voices. The floor is open for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. It has been properly moved and second or supported. All in favor? Uh, All opposed? Stay here. <laughs> Motion passes. The time is 744. This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you all for being here. Yeah. Back too long. Yeah, this is uh, uh, I, I got to give them good news like Daryl. Oh, sure. <laughs>